This Halloween, we're looking at a spooky chapter of Chicago folklore. It involves a man, a mural, and a murder mystery. And that's only where the ghost story begins. And WGN's Mike Lowe takes us inside one of Chicago's legendary taverns, a north side bar said to be haunted. In Chicago's Andersonville neighborhood, the flag of Sweden wraps around this rooftop water tank. What are you famous for here? My glug, I would hope. You know, I worked hard on my glug. In the back of Simon's Tavern, the spiced wine of Sweden stirs in its own kind of tank. The base of all glugs is port wine. In port wine, you cook raisin, cinnamon stick, cloves, cardamom seed, orange peel, almond, a little bit of sugar. 63-year-old tavern owner Scott Martin is bottling the brew for the holidays. It's Simon's signature blend of wine and spirits. Three gallons of glug have been bottled. We're on our way to 3,000, hopefully. But it's an altogether different kind of spirit that is said to haunt this nearly 90-year-old bar. So the story is, the ghost that was here was a female, a woman who had been murdered here. But to understand why some believe in a ghost story, you first have to know a little bit about the bar's history. They both had this dream of having their own business in America eventually. In the early 1900s, Andersonville became a mecca for Swedish immigrants. Among them, according to this census document, was Simon Lundberg of Sweden, who navigated his way to the neighborhood and became a tavern keeper. Bought this building in 1926, and in uh, 1929 got the okay to open up a speakeasy in a basement, just a club. Simon opened the tavern in 1934, complete with its own basement speakeasy. Come on down. The NN Club. Which stood for the No Name Club. Obviously, back in the day, you wouldn't mention anybody's names where you were getting your whiskey from. So you obviously <laughs> knock on a door and sliding peephole. Which now stores the tavern's booze and one of Simon's original bottles. This I found in the ceiling of the speakeasy. This is an unopened bottle of 12-year-old scotch previous to Prohibition. Around the corner, the heavy wooden door to the original freezer creaks and moans with the weight of history and horror. At the time Simon was building the bar, the great ocean luxury liner, the SS Normandy, had captured the imagination of the world. With the more than 1,900 passengers experiencing tennis courts, fine dining, and lavish interiors, as a wave of hardship washed over the immigrant community. Because nobody in this community who'd suffered through the Depression would have ever been able to afford to go on to Normandy, but they could come in here and feel like the richest people in the world. Simon built a 60-foot solid mahogany bar, giving the Swedes a taste of the Normandy experience right on Clark Street. It soon became a hangout for hunters, commemorated by an artist who painted a wall-sized mural called the Deer Hunter's Ball, which depicted real-life patrons of the bar. That guy used to be her husband. It was a man dancing with a woman. But the reality is, though, that the woman who used to be in there is a woman who was murdered. The legend goes that a member of Simon Lundberg's inner circle had an affair with the woman who was married. She later died a mysterious death. Simon ordered the mural to be changed. They actually cut her out of the mural and him out of the mural to make the whole thing go away. But the story holds she did not go away. Her lost soul remained at the tavern, slowly peeling the mural off of the wall in the exact spot where she belonged. So it makes sense in the sense that when you look at the mural where she had been, there's just constant spider webbing away from it and it's breaking apart and falling off the wall. Over the years, customers have reported feeling the spirit of a ghost and even Martin himself claims to have had a paranormal encounter. Now, honest to goodness, if something doesn't grab my beard, yank my head up, Brian Yarka saw my beard pointing up in the air. The legend, of course, has been twisted through the generations. Cheers. Perhaps Simon's ghost story has been embellished to become a fish tale. The circumstances of that whole situation are so many generations passed down, I have no idea what's really true. 
I often would sit here asking the spirit, like, hey, if you're here, it's okay. You know, you can live here too with me. In Andersonville, Mike Lowe, WGN News. Well, check it out if you dare.